All right, so far you've seen us unbox the robot and install it. We went to Pneumatic Engineering and met with Bethany who helped us understand some of the options for the robot. You've seen me come back and design the end effector which uses our vacuum systems to pick up parts. But now I'm gonna address some of the problems I had four years ago. That being that the robot, it did its job, but sometimes if the part weren't perfectly in place, it would go to pick it up if it were there or not. Now the robots have gotten a lot smarter and a lot easier to use in the past four years. So that's why we invited our team from Pneumatic Engineering to come out and show us the latest and greatest of robotic vision systems. Let's get started. Well, I have a wonderful electronic invention I want you to see. It, it looks something like this. All right guys, so this may look familiar. This was in the demo room at our distributor's office and they've brought it. Uh, Boris, why don't you come on over? Boris is a senior applications engineer with Pneumatic Engineering, the top guy. He's got all the answers. So Boris, thanks for joining us. Tell us, what are we looking at here? Absolutely. So here we have a complete package. We have the robot on a mobile stand that has been custom designed by Pneumatic Engineering. Mm -hmm. The robot starts right here mm -hmm. and ends right at this point. Okay. At the end of ARM tooling, we have a camera from Robotique, mm -hmm. which is a company in Quebec. Mm -hmm. This little slice right here is everything that there is with the camera. Okay, this, this section, about an inch worth exactly. is the camera Exactly, it's itself. a hockey puck, it okay. has the lens, it has the LED built in, uh -huh. and you have the cable that communicates back to the robot. Beyond that, we have the gripper, uh -huh. that is also from Robotique. Everything okay. is connected seamlessly. That's okay. the beauty of this. It's all plug and play. Right. So Universal Robot is unique in the aspect that it has the ability to accept apps, just mm -hmm. like we have our smartphones. Okay. So once you install the hardware, you plug it in, you install the app, mm -hmm. everything automatically sees each other and talks to each other. Mm -hmm. You don't have two technologies interfering or conflicting. Okay. So they talk very seamlessly, okay. and there's a wizard here. You uh -huh. just use a stylus, you go right through each step, uh -huh. you teach the particular part that you're interested in, mm -hmm. and in this particular case, we have a robot that's just kind of looking at that part. Okay. It's gonna pick it up and place it somewhere around in this area. I see, okay. And if you notice, it just took a picture, uh -huh. it processed the X, Y theta of the part. Okay. Robot goes down, approaches, picks, exits, and just drops it somewhere here. Got now it. I'm gonna place it somewhere else, obviously. Okay and you'll see that it will follow the part. Okay. So now the part presentation is mm -hmm. no longer rigid. Mm -hmm. You can just have parts randomly. Yes. As long as the camera can see it. Right, okay. So this solves a big problem that I had four years ago. Well, not a problem, um, but every part that I had, um, I did a, a, a plate with pins in it, and then I would put all these parts on it. And the robot, you know, it would just go to where I told it to go if a part were there or not. And right. so this, is so much more simple. I can just put the parts on. Now, is it a plane? Can I do stacks? What? You can do stacks, you can do planes, you can be at a different angle. It okay. doesn't have to be planar. Okay. So this alleviates all that pain. Oh. And the beauty is, right now we only have one part in the field of view, but you uh -huh. could have multiple parts. Okay. And the robot sees every single one at the okay. same time. Now, here's my other question. This is about the size of one of our pallets. Pallets are go on our, our pallet system. Um, I want it to pick up the part right in the middle of the pallet, regardless of orientation mm -hmm. or position. Is there a maximum range or size that this camera can hang handle? Well, it depends on the size of the part. Mm -hmm. So if we're looking at really far distances, obviously we have a larger field of view. Okay. So we can have multiple parts. But mm -hmm. if you have a really small part, mm -hmm. some cameras may or may not see that. Okay. So it depends on the size of the part, the distance from the plate, mm -hmm. and all that. Okay. Yeah. You know, when I sold my original UR10, I knew I would come back. And I knew the, the, the company was growing so fast, that technology was being adopted. I knew it's only going to get better. So I am so glad that I'm doing this now. And it's not done. I went on the, the UR uh, Universal Robots site and there's pages and pages of, of all these suppliers that sell these types of things. I was blown away. You know? Absolutely. So. Just like a, a smartphone. Uh -huh. um, there are multiple companies that are making 
products and applications for a smartphone. Right. The smartphone doesn't make anything extra. They make the phone, they put it out there, yeah. everybody starts adding things right. to it. So Universal Robot is pretty similar to yeah. that. Yeah, okay, I love it. All right. Well, Boris, I think you've answered all my questions and I'm definitely sold on this camera. I just need to contact my sales guy, Rami, and let him know I'm gonna buy one. Thanks Absolutely. for your time. My pleasure. You bet. Thank you. All right. What? Yes! Package came in, Robotique Lean Robotics. Man, they're talking my language. I love that. So Robotique is a company up in Canada. Okay. This is like a robot version of a green screen, I'm guessing. It's cool, UR3 calibration board, probably. Yeah, calibration for UR5 and UR10, just like we have. That's kind of cool. Um, okay, great. We got a pamphlet, quick start guide, that's good. DOF, I know that stands for depth of focus from my camera days, so I like that. Uh, Robotique community, good to know. We have, okay. So USB, from what I understand, this is either going to be for software or it's going to be like a dongle. So you plug it in and you have to own this and it has to be plugged in for the camera to work. I believe that's what it is. Uh, USB hub, that tells me, I haven't looked, but I think there's maybe one USB port in the Universal Robotics, uh, Robots, um, I guess like whatever control cabinet. So this opens up if you have to do multiple. That's good. All right. This looks exactly like the um, end of arm on the robot. So this is gonna be an adapter. It's probably gonna go with the robot. Let's see that. Uh, my license key is apparently in this. Let's open this up. <laughs> That's what a license key looks like. Simple USB thing. And so that makes sense that if I have to, I don't know if these get plugged in at the same time, if it reads this for the software and this is the dongle. And so that's why you, it needs the hub or uses it. That might be the case. So um, at least I got those two and here we go. Oh, hardware, hardware bag. Uh, we're not going to use this hardware. I don't think because we're going to use the hardware in the, um, the vacuum cup that we designed. So we probably won't use that, but I'm still gonna hold on to it. And here it is, folks. Here is the camera itself. I like that it's um, bagged. Yeah, that's awesome. Okay, so uh, this has the four bolt pattern and then the pin, so that's alignment. I didn't include a pin in my end effector because it just, it doesn't matter how it's clocked and doesn't need perfect accuracy. It's just picking up in a general spot and it's dropping off and it's going back to the spot where it dropped it off. So that uh, end effector did not need a pin. It just adds more complication and another component. And also two more tools, drill and maybe a ream or end mill to size. So um, it's important that this has it because the camera and the arm need to be clocked accurately. So. This goes in, um, this hardware, it could go in there and I believe you would bolt this in. Yeah, okay, so this goes there. Perfect, okay, so that mimics what the robot's end of arm and this end of arm, um, it just kind of duplicates it. So this gets wedged in and then um, I do know from experience, doing all the research, these are lights and that's the camera right there. Um, one thing that I'm not sure about is when we bolt on the vacuum cup is will it interfere with the view of this camera? I don't know. So we might need to remake it or at least modify it. Um, it's easy to do. So what I'll do is um, kind of box this back up, take it out and, um, oh, by the way, 
obviously, okay, another need for a USB, and this is probably uh, for power, um, or maybe signal or something like that. And this doesn't have a switch or anything like that. So yeah, this is ready to go. Um, they say it's pretty much plug and play. There's some software that I need to go download and um, either upgrade the robots software or install the software. I don't know. We're gonna head out there, see how it goes. Put this all away and uh, let's do that. Let's go. So the cool thing about the power of video is that you can put a box in one spot and do this. Cool, all right, it worked. So let's open this up. So I watched the Robotique installation videos, put a link to those videos in the description below. Uh, this is gonna be routed up through the bottom of the control and plugged in. Now there's a few different things that we have to plug in here. Obviously the USB into a hub, but also these power. That's what powers the camera itself. So let's get started. Here's our USB hub. Now there's two USB ports right here. This will allow us to plug in the three items we need and still offer a, another USB. So if there are other peripherals someday, you still are not losing any spots. So the first item is going to be, uh, this is the uh, camera server, the software lives on this. Next item is gonna be the, kind of like the, the security dongle, goes in there. And now let's plug this in. Okay. Now this part of the camera, this can be run up. There's a few grommets here. I'm gonna pop one of the grommets out. Run this up through. And plugged in to the USB hub. So all we need to do now is provide power to the camera. So it has these two connectors that pop out. This is gonna be all 24 volt and this is zero volt. So our red wire is gonna be wired into any of the 24 volt ones, but I'm gonna put in the first one uh, as the Robotique installation video showed. Good, and then we'll plug this back in. Okay. Now we'll pull out this one, which is gonna be zero volt, black, ground, all kind of synonymous, and put that in the top one as well. All right, tuck that in so it's out of the way. It is that easy, we've just hooked up the camera. So now let me unravel this cable, we'll walk around, we'll install it, on the end of the arm. So let's start that. Now the first thing I need to do is take off the vacuum gripper that we tried. And you know what? I realized something. The profile might interfere with the camera. Um, I hope it all works out. Obviously this can be indexed 90 degrees. It's another reason why I didn't add a pin that aligns it. We wanna have flexibility. So we don't need to use a pin if it's not needed. So now let me go grab the, the camera itself. I'll wind the cord under parallel with the power for the robot up and over, get it all tidy, built in, dialed in. So let me grab that. So it would go about there. It's gonna come over here at some point. Yeah. Now the RoboT camera, it does have a pin because I think it may need um, some type of alignment so we will put that just like this. Okay, good, nice and secure. The other thing I realized is I won't be able to use, man, I was so proud of this. But <laughs> I don't think I'll be able to use these guys. Um, they are too short. Uh, this is about as long as they come, unless we want to make our own. That's the hard way of doing things. So I might have to modify this in two ways. If it interferes with the camera, which it kind of looks like it is, um, and also longer metric screws. We'll find out in a minute. Um, we don't need to hook up the vacuum cup right now. So for the time being, we'll just secure it with these uh, screws that came with the camera itself. So. 
So again, the faceplate has this. Okay, and obviously, see, you would use a, a longer screw to go through everything, so everything's being sandwiched together. But the way it looks right now is if you peek down here, this camera, the view might be obscured right by this edge and who knows, maybe more of it. So I'm gonna have to go back into Fusion, create a relief here and um, basically reroute the vacuum gasket, use a different screw. So this is a good first design. We're definitely gonna keep it. We're gonna salvage as much of the machining that we already did and, um, and hopefully not obscure the camera view. But uh, for now, let's just work with the camera and get it set up. It's gonna be loosely routed right about there. That's easy to do. Got plenty of cable left. Um, I don't see any problems moving forward. One down, got four to go. All right, these are all done. Now you don't wanna really over tighten these zip ties. You just wanna manage the cables. You don't wanna lock them in place because last time I learned when these start moving, they you will either have a lot of slack or get pretty tight and it kind of self corrects. So you wanna leave plenty of slack, especially at the joints. Like this could be tight, this could be tight, um, but you would never tighten, like one of these two top ones needs to be loose so you can pull. So. I've got both of them just because we're in setup mode, kind of loose. That's exactly what we want and routed safely out of the way. Okay, so that's ready to go. Now at this point, we could probably just turn on the robot, start going through, get this guy set up. Let's head back, fire it up. Okay, so I powered it on and we're at the welcome screen right now. All the software that the camera needs is on this USB stick. I downloaded this from the Robotique website I'm gonna just plug that into this USB port right here. Looks good. Menu, settings, system, UR caps, and we're gonna add one. And it's seen there's a couple USB disks. I don't know, let's go in this top one. I don't see anything there. No back, uh, okay, USB. Yeah, okay, great. So I'm gonna select the UR cap and go open. Okay, so it loaded the UR cap onto it. Now I just need to hit restart and we'll have all the software loaded up, ready to make this camera run. All right, so it booted back up. We're back to that original screen. Um, I'm gonna go through the same process I did. Okay, active UR caps, Robotique wrist camera. If I hit plus two USB disks, I'm gonna just say it's okay to pull it right now. All right, so it didn't crash. And uh, yeah, it looks good. So now we just need to configure the robot installation. I'm gonna go ahead and do that, cut to that chase, and then we're gonna start assembling everything so we can start picking up pallets to test the capability of this. We're gonna do that in the next video. Also, I'm gonna show you the third design for what we came up with to hold the pallets in place so we can get everything running, synchronized. It's gonna be awesome. I'm so excited for you to keep watching. So if you haven't done so, go ahead and subscribe and hit that notification bell. That way you know right when the new episode comes out, you follow along with our journey. So until then, go innovate your production.